And now it's time for reading Instagram questions with PH Balance. Leia asked me what my dream vacation to go on would be. There's a lot of this world I haven't explored, as I'm sure is the same for most of you. I've never been out of the country, so I think that would be my first stop. I want to travel Europe. I want to go to England. I want to go to Germany. I want to go to Italy. I want to go to Greece. I almost called it Greek for some reason. I would love to go to all of those places. I never thought I would ever want to go to Japan, and the only reason because of that is because I don't speak the language, but Japan looks so cool and it has all of the things I love. I have to go there. That would probably be my number one stop um, as well as Europe. So Japan and Europe for sure. Australia also would be something if the bugs weren't awful. That's enough, I hate bugs. As far as like the states go, I've always wanted to go to North Carolina. I feel like they'd have nice beaches there. I feel like they'd have good seasons, you know? Summer asked me if I would ever consider getting a tattoo and if so, what would it be? I'm not a huge tattoo person. Both of my brothers have tattoos. I know a lot of people with tattoos. I don't have an issue with them. I don't find them unattractive or anything like that. I'm just, I just don't think I will ever get a tattoo. That being said, if I did, I'd want it to be something super meaningful. Not just meaningful to me, I would like it to make a statement. There's actually one tattoo I really, really liked and I was like, man, I should consider getting that. That would be dope. And I don't remember what it is. However, one, I, one tattoo I do remember that I think is strong and actually means something that I firmly believe in is people getting an equal sign on their ring finger, which symbolizes uh, both equality for everyone, but also equal rights in love and marriage. Hardcore believer and stand firm on you should love who you love. Don't let anyone stop you or tell you otherwise. So being able to display equality for everyone in all walks of life, but also through marriage and love, that's probably what I would end up doing because I would like it to mean something, but I also think you could make it look pretty cool as well. Ooh, or maybe I would get a Triforce on my hand. I'll get a little lightning bolt on my forehead. That's too close to a swastika, I don't like that. Saminta asked me, what did I wanna be when I grew up? I'm glad you asked that, Saminta, thank you. I love you. There were a lot of things I wanted to be growing up. I never had like one big like thing when I was a child where I was like, I wanna be an astronaut and a firefighter and a policeman. There were several things throughout my life that kind of I wanted to be. The biggest one was a major league baseball player. A lot of people don't know this now, but I played baseball for like 13 years of my life or something like that. And I was fairly good at it too. I always wanted to be a major league baseball player, um, but I always prioritize video games over actually training. I think I'm in the right line of work now. Tried out for my high school baseball team. I didn't make the cut. I played basketball and football a lot growing up too, but then when I got into high school, baseball was the only one I felt comfortable in. And it turns out a lot of the football players ended up making the baseball team because the football coach was also the baseball coach for our high school. Why? I couldn't tell you. Then my brothers did theater at our high school just as like a fun little hobby for them. And through watching my brothers do that, I found a love for musical theater and acting. And that's what made me shift gears and decide, hey, I wanna be an actor instead. I also, in different parts of my life, wanted to be a chef because I really like cooking. That's still to this day something I really wish I was good at. I wanted to be a musician. Both my brothers are musicians. Specifically, if I could choose an instrument to be a master at, I wanna be a piano player. I also think bass guitar would be really cool. I also wanted to be a police officer at one point in my life. The very first time I ever brought that to, up to any of my friends, they literally laughed in my face and said that I was not more or less manly enough to be in that line of work, so. There you go, toxic masculinity crushing my dreams. But now, I'm not even joking, my dream is to just be a streamer full time. I think that would be a blast. Um, if not that, all my dreams are like out of this world. All of my current dreams are out of this world and it'd be really, really hard to achieve any of them. But my number one dream right now is to be a full-time streamer, YouTuber, stuff like that. Content creator, if you will. I also would love to be a writer, actor, and director. But specifically, I went through a, a time where I only wanted to be in the limelight as an actor. Started moving towards, oh, I actually really like directing. Now I'm to a point in my life where writing really feels comfortable for me. And if I could be a part of like a really solid writing team, 
I think that would be amazing. Megan asked me what my current restaurant obsessions are. As far as that goes for literally anyone across the US, I've been ordering Schlotzkis like every single day. It's not really a restaurant, but I've been door dashing Schlotzkis to my house and it has slapped 90% of the time. Other than that, I would say my biggest two restaurant obsessions, I've been going to Carrabba's Italian Grill a lot. They have a really, really nice steak and fettuccine combo that has been calling my name ever since I got it during Valentine's Day. And then also, as far as Asian food goes, Pepper Twins is just, if you live in the Houston area, try Pepper Twins. They have this thing called orange beef, not orange chicken, orange beef. You heard me right. It slaps. Clara asked me, what is the biggest obstacle I've overcome? I could list off some very, very vague uh, obstacles I've overcome that most of you can relate to, you know, depression um, and heartbreak and stuff like that. Um, something I don't really talk a lot about. It's a little more personal to me and I probably won't dig into it too much on this video. I'll, I feel like a lot of you are going to hear this and think it's stupid. And you have every right to think that, and you can think it all you want. I don't want to hear it, but it is something I struggled with. I struggled with more or less an online addiction. And I think addiction is the only real good term to call this. I went through years of my life where every single day after school as a young preteen teenager, I would go online, I would talk to people, uh, random people I'd never met in real life, but just like struck up these relationships with people online through various applications, you know, Kick and Snapchat. It was very, very damaging for the psyche of a um, not yet matured brain, an adolescent brain, if you will. You know, I, I basically became like a different person. And, and like my online persona that I portrayed was very much not me. I was a very introverted, shy person in real life, but then online, hiding behind that screen, I was a very extroverted, outgoing, would do and say things I would never do or say in real life. And that can be really damaging. I know that in uh, high school, I actually had a lot of relationships that I ended up damaging by saying and doing things that Steven wouldn't do or say. And so if you're one of those people and you're watching this video and you stuck around this long, thank you for sticking by my side, I guess. There's so many people I owe an apology to for just not behaving well in my high school years. But I'm in a much better place now. I did like five or six years where I just cut all social media out of my life cold turkey. No more Facebook, no more Instagram, no more Snapchat. It wasn't until recently that I remade a, a Facebook and an Instagram and it wasn't even my choice. I made it for work and I made it because I was told you can't be an actor if you don't have social media. And it pisses me off to this day. I've been wanting to do this YouTube thing since 2014 and I never did it and I never bit the bullet because that is the time where I was going through all this and this realization that I needed to change um, the way I do things and change my life because it, it, it sounds stupid to someone on the outside looking in. I mean, will I ever be more than I've always been? I'm, I'm sitting here tap, tap, tapping on the glass and I'm waving through a window that's such a fucking stupid joke that like 3% of people are gonna get. But seriously, it sounds really stupid from an outside perspective, or maybe it just does, sounds unreal and made up, but it did really ruin a lot of my relationships and friendships growing up, and even in my young adult life, in my late teens to early 20s. And it's something I did have to seek therapy for, and something I did have to just make some real life altering choices about. Um, so through that, I almost in a sense became like a pathological liar. Now the only thing I have to deal with is depression and anxiety. More so depression, not super anxious. I'm actually a pretty laid back dude. I just hate myself and my life. That's actually not true. Don't Steven cut that out. But yeah, I, I, that's something I did overcome through all, through therapy, through sheer willpower and determination and just the realization that something in my life had to change. If I wanted to be the person that I wanted to be, the person I portrayed in my everyday life, the real Steven, made that decision to change. I meditated a lot, which honestly, I will say, therapy is great. The form of therapy I had 
didn't feel like it did much for me and maybe it's because I did therapy right out the gate and it was still too fresh and I wasn't willing to open up and really let it take hold. But meditation is what really, really helped me through those dark times. Uh, if you've never meditated before, I've said it before, Headspace is such a beautiful thing that I think everyone should try. Um, just take some time for yourself. Self-love, self-care. Honestly, it is so important. And I realized that the real root of my addiction and my problems that I had to overcome was a lack of self-love, self-care, and a lack of self-confidence. Um, and through learning how to love myself and believe in myself, I've overcome those things. We've all struggled, we've all overcome. Even the people you think are just so happy and have the most beautiful, lavish, luxurious lifestyles, they've struggled too. Um, so if you're out there struggling right now, I'm with you, I believe in you, and I love you. That's the end of, that, that, that's the end of my questions, ladies and gents. Go ahead and follow my Instagram account once again, at phbalance20, uh, and submit your questions, and we can continue to do some of these. Um, I'll also go ahead and make other videos as well, um, describing... <laughs> I'm laughing because it's stupid. I'm gonna make other videos as well, uh, sharing what made me decide I wanted to become an actor in the first place. That's actually already up on the channel. So if you wanna check that out, it's right here. It's in one of these directions. Go ahead and check that out. It's a really, really honest, real, and stupid story. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave a like if you like the content and leave a comment letting me know you're here, telling me what you wanna see next and maybe even dropping some questions down below. I'd love to hear your feedback and answer those questions for you. All right, I will see you in the next one. Bye, lovely people.